Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and um, I want to show off this 3D printed lock holder. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase. This is on Thingiverse for you to 3D print as you want, whenever you want, um, and however you like. Um, I also just want to, before I go into what this lock holder does and uh, how it's designed, uh, just want to say that I'm going to do the video backwards to the way that I was going to do it. I was going to talk to you about the kind of history behind it and um, the design process and the failures and how um, the you know the power of iterative design using uh, rapid prototyping tools like 3D printers uh, got me to this final design. But I won't. I'm just going to go cut straight first of all to what this holder is, what it does, and then if you can still be bothered, then I'd really like it if you could hang around and listen to a bit of the history behind it. So um, this lock holder here, this particular model, is my final um, and best uh, design for the lock holder I had envisaged, and that is one which can hold three types of lock, which um, I personally find hard to hold in hand and don't always have a padlock body I can put them in. So I didn't use uh, large format or small format interchangeable cores as something to think about because I can put those into padlocks. I thought of the Euro lock, and you might have guessed that from this side. Um, kick cylinders, which also fit in here, and also um, uh, rim cylinders, the European ones. Um, the larger kind of screw-ins type ones I find actually fit in the hand quite well already, so didn't really need a holder. Um, uh, same sort of thing with um, uh, oval cylinders, although maybe in a future design. Anyway, so um, this is designed to take uh, Euro cylinders where um, they are longer on uh, one side at least than two and a half centimeters and there's a good reason why that is and that's because the um, cam at the back which would look like this would catch so if you had a nice long euro cylinder and you pop that in there we go and if it's quite snugly and by the way i'd always um, go and um, push this in from the rear purely because if you've got a snapped Euro cylinder or a cam, um, you can end up kind of scraping the plastic. And this actually, because of the tight fit and tolerances here, is comfortable enough to uh, load up and start to uh, tension and, and pick in hand just like this if you want to, okay? So this is this is fine the way it is. However, you might find with really long ones, um, they could get heavy and they might just start creeping backwards. Hence why I put in some little uh, thumb turn screws here. Now, in one of my earlier designs, I used round um, threaded tube, which is also fine, but I thought, well, under some torque, these um, hex standoffs for PCB boards would be really, really useful. And I've got three um, hex inserts here. There's two designs, actually, one with the hex inserts and one with the round ones. Okay, so you can you can choose which one you can get hold of the best. You don't have to use these brass thumb turns, although I really, really like them. Um, and these are a bit long, actually. I'd recommend something around two and a half centimeters, but uh, these are three uh, centimeters, and, and that works fine for me because you know I like to be able to rest my fingers around them and stuff. You don't even need them in. You don't need, even need both sides, actually, for that matter. Because of the way this works, you could easily just take one out or both of them out if you wish and just have it kind of like that and just tighten one side up. It's, it's, you know, or swap them around, whatever you like. But yeah, you can see here that this one is long enough that the cam would be free to turn at the back, no problems at all. Here's the key, there you go, like that. Now, if you had a shorter one, um, let's move that one out of the way. It's like, ooh, this one, okay. And again, you can see that if I put this in the front, the cam wouldn't get by, so always side in at the back. There you go. And again, it's it's quite tight, but um, let's just turn that for the sake of it. And here is the key for this lock, and you can see the cam at the back. So if you want a positive open, of course, you want the cam to be able to freely move, and it does um, quite a lot. So if you look at the key there, you're definitely going to get an open. Uh, and you can also swap the cam around if you've got a disassembly kit. So that's why it's like that at the back. Okay, so undo this push it back, oh, take the key out, push it back out. Um, and it will take shorter and shorter um, uh, euros. And again, this is a stats one, so best to pop it in to the back so you don't damage the plastic. Um, and that can go in, it's quite tight this era. You can see how um, that could 
keep going shorter and shorter and shorter until you get to about here, at which point, um, if a euro cylinder was flush to the front, it was two and a half centimeters. You could still uh, turn the cam at the back any shorter than two and a half centimeters, then it would interfere with the holder. So just bear in mind that this works for like nearly all euro cylinders that you ever see, but it does have some limits. Okay, so ignoring that, what else can it hold? Well, um, and I will put this one back in for now, kick cylinders. So kicks, I've got a Sparrows cutaway one here, don't appear to fit in the first instance, but actually once you screw um, the screws in, there you go, um, you can do a couple of things really, depending on how you like it. You can centralize it like that. And again, we can get tension on the lock. There you go. I haven't got any pins in this, but you can see how I could tension it and pick away. Good stuff. Um, or you could actually, again, just use one side. Um, there's no, apart from it not being central, that might kind of, you might go, oh no, but I need to centralize. You can just have it like that. Okay. So kicks are another type of lock that it can hold. Now, the other thing which is quite common in the UK are rim cylinders. And what I've got here is a little ledge. Why do you have a ledge, you ask me? Well, it's because if you look at the back, these rim cylinders um, usually are screwed in um, through a piece of wood and you get these kind of like screws which go uh, in at the back. These screw holes are quite uniform on most, not all, but most of these rim cylinders like that. And the idea is that you would put this in and these little um, ledges would rest on top of these, let's call them ears. There we go. So that go in. Oh, and by the way, yes, I've put, got a tail on this one and it still goes in just fine. You'll notice that under the underside of this is a little uh, ledge. Little, um, un can you see there where it's sort of press fit? And this countersinking here allows you know, the lock to sit flush. And again, because of those ears, if I try to turn it, it doesn't turn. So you could, in theory, just like the Euro cylinders, not use a thumb screw if you want, but should you wish, you could actually tighten this up on the bottom. I did use a uh, 15 millimeter inserts at the, at the sides because I just like that. I could use shorter ones. There you go. You can just lock that in by tightening it up there. And this presses the lock further up and that just, um, oh. clearly haven't gone, oh no. Um, yeah, this this one um, is still being glued. Um, the, the epoxy hasn't set yet, but yeah, it holds it in. There you go. So whatever you do, make sure your epoxy is set before you start doing a video. And it holds it in. But other than that, it's actually quite stable as it is. So I'll probably have to re-epoxy that in now because uh, uh, I didn't let it cure overnight. I wanted to do the video really quickly and I've learned my lesson. It might not need epoxying if it dries properly. Anyway, you can see that there's a screw at the bottom. Uh, I use these hex ones purely because I quite like the idea that um, under torque they would um, not turn freely um, in the glue if they break away. Um, so there you go. It does hold um, all different types of rim cylinders as well. So here's a different one. This is a merchant one. Clicks, clicks in. And again, because it's in tight, um, you probably don't need to use that bottom screw. But you know, I put it there just in case you really, really, really want to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And again, you know, there's it's nothing, um, nothing that's going to break in here. It all seems pretty sturdy. All good to go. So yeah, it's. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm really pleased with the design on this. Um, all I can say is make sure your epoxy sets before you start doing videos on it. But yeah, I hope you really like it. And again, you don't need. Um, you don't need these uh, thumb turns in if you don't want to. You can just take them out. Um, you can get brass ones, steel ones, all sorts of lengths. I use M4 threads um, for these, but I'm sure that if you've got the right size, you'd use M3. Um, so yeah, that's my lock noob um, lock holder. It's on Thingiverse and um, yeah, go 3D print it. Make sure you glue your inserts in and make sure that the glue cures overnight, <coughs> unlike me, and um, and have fun with it. So it just you know, means that you can pick in hand a lot more comfortably, um, get tension on those locks. Um, yeah, nice little tool. I like it anyway. I'm pretty proud of it. And I've even put my little uh, lock noob symbol on there for you. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, clear down and I'm just going to uh, talk you through where the design came from and 
uh, and my iterations and failures along the way. Back in a second. Okay, and we're back. So um, I just did a, a first half of this video, or first part of this video, on this uh, lock holder. I'm really proud of the design. It works really well in my experience, uh, nice and strong. And um, you can go download this and print it off from Thingiverse. Just get yourself some inserts um, and some little uh, screws if you want, and you're ready to go. But I didn't get to this final design straight away. My first ever design, actually, was... Um, over a year ago now, where I, and don't laugh, I started with this, which was an offcut of some very cheap, very light pine. And I had the idea that you could put Euro cylinders in this side, rim cylinders in the back, and that you um, could cut the corners off. You can see the pencil marks here to so make it a bit more comfortable because square is horrible to hold. Now, um, Pete Restall, who isn't active on YouTube anymore, which is a big shame, um, I hope he comes back. He uh, and I had worked on a, a design using hardwood and he came up with a really beautiful hardwood one, which he actually has back now with him. Um, so it was a long time, um, a year before I actually had anything that I could really use. I'm not really a woods craftsman, um, but I did have my uh, 3D printer. So I thought that I would start to design a lock holder out of PLA. And you see here that the first failure is, um, <laughs> and there's many, is if you look here, my lock noob symbol I wanted on the front, which I thought was kind of neat, but um, because it's easier on printers to print it this way up, and the first layer is always a bit thicker, uh, it just looks awful, so I had to move it to the side. Um, also tried to bevel the edge too much. I didn't like the look of it, so I stopped there, but I still had the, the round holes uh, at the sides and the bottom. But what you can see is a couple of things. I didn't have the ledges at the back, and also the sizing was bad on this. You can't fit any locks in it at all. Um, I didn't get the sizing right, didn't get the scaling right, and um, also, look at the shape. This is a Decagon. This is really wonky. Again, I didn't realize until I uh, printed two of them, actually. Um, this one's a slightly different design that... Uh, <laughs> my Decagon wasn't quite a Decagon. Again, this one was to improve on this and put the lock noob symbol at the top. Um, you see I've got support in here to keep the holes nice and round, um, but I still haven't got the scaling right at all. And um, yeah, this can't hold any locks. You can see it's a bit chewed up. It's because I've been trying to force locks into it. It just won't work. There's no point at all in that one. So um, the one good thing about um, uh, having nobody else sort of involved in the, the design of these is I can sort of design it how I like, which is actually quite an advantage. Then we got our first working prototype. This one is the first prototype I did. Um, this is going off to um, somebody who sent me some lock holders they made, actually, this first prototype. Because it works, it takes Euro cylinders at the front, it takes um, uh, rims at the back, but you do need to tighten using the screw at the bottom to hold it in. But it does work, it's a perfectly good working prototype, and I want to send this off to um, uh, uh, to a subscriber as a thank you for their generosity. Um, just a little um, thing to, to, to play with and to use if they so desire. Um, but you can see that the improvements are that one, it's scaled right, and the Decagon is the right shape, and um, it can actually hold locks, unlike this one. So we've already got an improvement. But I wasn't quite happy with the fact that I had to screw um, the bottom screw in to, to make sure that the rim cylinder is held in properly. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So when this goes in, like I said, it's perfectly usable, perfectly good. But this has this um, you have to screw it till it see, just moves a bit. You have to screw it in here to push this up to the top. Not a big deal, perfectly fine, but I, I thought, can I improve on that? And the answer was, yeah, I can. So I got this one. I also noticed that um, it didn't sit perfectly flush, which again, isn't a big deal. But the reason why it doesn't sit perfectly flush is because of this lip. And this lip here uh, means that it doesn't sink in. So I countersunk it and I put some ears at the back or little steps. Those steps interact with the holders at the back and this one does. Um, this one's a bit of a fiddle actually this one, but it does fit in nicely and it sits a lot more flush. So much so you don't need to put the screw in the bottom on this one. And I've got an idea of who to send this one to as well. Um, 
because I promised the first prototype to um, somebody else as a thank you. So my second prototype, which is again working, um, I've got somebody else in mind who I'll send that to. And then I finally sort of, I think I, well, I don't like the word perfected, but I think I've got to a stable um, configuration that I really like in that it still has the ears. Um, I increased the radius of the countersinking so these fit in a bit better. Um, I actually increase the depth of those ears at the back um, while, uh, while making sure that um, I set a limit because I know most Euro cylinders start at um, two and a half centimeters before the cam. So I didn't want to go above that. So this is 2.45 in, in terms of height to the top of this ledge. Um, and then uh, I was really happy with this, but I wasn't happy as it happens with the um, uh, fact that these were round inserts. There's nothing wrong with them, but you know, when I was playing around with it before the glue had set, <laughs> who would do that? Um, I found that they were more prone to turning than I'd like, so I decided to um, uh, have a look and research what else I could use, and we came to the final design where we had these hexagonal inserts, um, which means that you know they're going to hold a lot strong. When that glue cures, it's going to be in there pretty well uh, fixed, I reckon. Um, and there we go. That's that's the sort of history. It's a shame I don't have the, the um, hardwood one that Pete Restall made me um, to show you sort of the the the, the, the transition, but um, at least I can show you this is my this is sort of all my work and this is all my prototyping to show you how um, these have sort of advanced through the stages um, through to sort of um, ones which don't work at all, working prototypes um, which are very usable and then final designs here which you can go, like I said, go to Thingiverse, get somebody to uh, print them off for you if you don't have a printer, um, glue in your insert of choice, and um, and, and get ha picking in hand, just like I like to. Okay, thanks for watching. That's quite a long video, but um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.